Yeah, and overall, like we said, very, very comfortable game one for Eager. Yep. And it's just, I'm not sure how Flashpoint are really going to have, but hopefully they have some kind of response to Team Eager after such a pretty heavy one-sided matchup. Yeah. So let's go ahead and take a look and see what happens in game number two. We've we'll got F dot and take it away. <sighs> Yes, we are certainly here, ladies and gentlemen, getting ready for our game number two. Eager looked, I mean, I I, I put it very bluntly uh, off screen, totally. I think Eager, Eager just like ordered whatever they wanted and got it right away. There was no contest. Flashpoint certainly needs to step it up. Where do they do so in game number two? They have to do a better job just keeping up the farm compared to Eager. Despite Xenotronics finding the solo kill onto the Zaman, he never managed to really snowball that sure. to getting more farm out rotating him or making plays in the mid lane. I think that Flashpoint was just too worried about the rotations. That never really happened from DJ Pernicus on the Rad of Tasker Global Ultimate. So Flashpoint were just too hesitant. The most aggressive play that they did the whole time around was trying to invade that red buff at level 2 or 3. Mm. They, and then they got out rotated by the best. And then from there, it seemed that Flashpoint were just too hesitant to do anything. When we saw Gold Furies from Team Eager, we didn't even see Flashpoint even try to go for the Portal Demon until it was too late. Yeah, just a little bit too late as far as that one is concerned. Sir Cat Nices, the same bands coming out from Team Eager. This is this is what Team Eager does. Yeah. We saw it all throughout last season. A lot of teams will sort of pick their bands, pick and choose how they want to play things week by week. Eager, they have a strategy that they don't like playing against, and they just ban it for the whole season. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. They're going to first pick the Ratatoska yet again. We'll see if that's going to go for Devious or DJ Pernik as Flashpoint. Electing to still stick to their guns as mm -hmm. well. Sylvanas was working well for Shadow Q, especially considering the fact that they put him in that soul lane at level one, being able to outclear both DJ and Divios. The auto selection might help Flashpoint out a little bit. You can see them getting into some trouble during the uh, during the game in various spots, looking towards the jungle, etc. Giannis might allow some exit room for that. And I agree with you. I think I think Shadow Q on the Sylvanas. He wasn't able to really make anything happen as far as that's concerned, but he certainly had flashes where the, I have no problem with the Sylvanas second pick. Uh, the Geb and the Poseidon, however, they come through. So Team Eager will be playing Poseidon in this time around now that Giannis is selected and the cripple should help against Giannis but Thanatos selected by Flashpoint Esports a lot of players have picked up the Thanatos because that's the flavor of the month it's what's hot and honestly it's just a good character at the end of the day Mirage has a fantastic oh, yeah. amount of hours played on this character this is absolutely one of his go-to picks and he loves building it very defensively it's very difficult to lock down Mirage he invented a specific build that makes it very difficult to pop that build into any sort of Dismay. So we'll see how Mirage starts off that game, whether or not he's going to go for a more offensive mind or defensive. Already taken away is a Nami, though, eager, respecting Xenotronics. I mean, hey, he's solo Zap Man, certainly not something that uh, Zap wants to see happen twice. Thanatos, though, going into the Poseidon will have some struggles here. Uh, early game, you're not using your ultimate on Thanatos as an execute. You're using it more as a setup man maneuver. You're going to come down, ult with Poseidon, then follow up with the 1-3 combo. Unfortunately for Thanatos, Poseidon with a good, with a good hand on his relics is going to be able to get out of trouble and then unleash the Kraken. So Thanatos certainly has to watch it when he ganks the mid lane for sure. Flashpoint really focusing out Zap with the on her and Apollo ban, picking up Uller, taking away a lot of jump options from the Hunters, mm. which forces now Zap into a Medusa, which is less safe defensively, still has a lot of mobility with the passive, could potentially look to pick up that Fatalis. Xing Chen, though, that's definitely going for Divios. Yeah, Divios is another, Divios is a guy that loves this character over there in the solo lane. Xing Chen has been a very important part of Team Eager's sort of approach to the game. We've seen Divios a number of times on this. Xing Chen definitely really make this happen. He'll be up against the Sun Wukong on Aquarius in in the solo lane for Flashpoint. So as we head into game number two, Flashpoint Esports with their new lineup. Giannis in the mid lane, Thanatos lurking in the jungle, Uller and Sylvanas in the long lane, and then Aquarius, the rookie, on the Sun Wukong. Tolly, how you feeling about FPE versus EGR. I think that Flashpoint have better chances in this game just because the fact that we see there's still a little bit of sustain here from Shadow Q, but now you have a better jungler than the last time around for Flashpoint. Mirage is more comfortable on the Thanos, obviously, than Susano. I didn't see anything 
spectacular or anything marginal, honestly, out of Mirage the last game. He did not look to make any sort of plays around that mid lane. Now, to be fair, Eager made it very difficult for him to look for those plays. But still, as a jungler, you control the pace yeah. of the game. You have to put yourself in position to look for stuff like that, especially when you're Susano that has so much mobility with the passive. You have great tools in terms of the knockout from your ultimate and just a pull to be able to get people out of the safety of their own tower. When it comes down to it, Tully, I don't even think Flashpoint played poorly. They just didn't do much at all. They didn't do anything wrong last game. They just didn't do anything. Team Eager was able to do whatever they wanted without much opposition. Xenotronics gonna get surprised by Aurora here. Little uh, okey doke. Yeah, Xenotronics did not see Aurora whatsoever. No, not at all. And that's a nice little switch of pace here coming out of Eager to be able to sit in this lane a little longer. Because it was actually Zaman that had a little bit of issues in the beginning of the game, but Flashpoint now they're gonna invade the blue and the speed at the same time. It's gonna give Eager an opportunity though to invade the purple and the red. I, I like this play coming out from Flashpoint. Flashpoint, and I'll tell you exactly why, Tully. It's because they tried this in game number one, and it definitely didn't work. But they stick to their guns here in game number two. They understand why. The fact that it didn't work doesn't mean that it shouldn't ever work. They understand that their position, that their problem was positioning last time around, and not the strategy in and of itself. And that right there, you got to give credit to the captain, Shadow Q. He uh, definitely is a veteran leader, and he understands when the issue is the pro is the situation itself versus just that one type of execution. Well, the Japernicus was able to at least still grab a speed buff of his own. So eager, they lose two buffs on the right. They're able to strip away one buff on the left. So technically, they didn't lose their own speed buff since they grabbed it. And DJ Pernicus takes away the red from Flash. Point. So it's actually Eager had one buff in vain. If they got, grab this Oracles, this is also a nice little victory for them considering Flashpoint grabbed the Fire Giant Elementals on the right-hand side. And both of them do go to Team Eager. Worth noting, Tully, that, that, uh, that because of the invade from Flashpoint, it threw Team Eager off of their normal if you will. Now, this is going to be the fourth game that we've seen from Team Eager so far. But if you look at the tape of the past games, Eager prioritize those early oracles very heavily. In fact, in game number one and in some of their earlier games as well, five-man rotation to those early oracles. It's less about the gold and the experience gained and more about that early vision on the Gold Fury. Especially against a Shadow Q team, you don't want to let Gold Fury go. Well, putting that much pressure on the left takes away the pressure on the right. We already see a one-level advantage for Aquarius. Not only that, the net worth is about 300 gold in the favor of this Sun Wukong, which is really good to be able to shut down a Guardian this early in the lane phase and I love what Aquarius is doing in the laning phase is being able to just maximize his abilities hit both Divios and the lane at the same time even if Aquarius takes this poke that he's doing it doesn't matter long term because he's able to push this wave under the tower Divios is going to lose so much gold here so the, the build coming here from Divios very interesting we see the chalice of mana started out he knows he's going to be drowned he knows he's going to be drained out throughout the entirety of the game he knows the start from last time DJ wants to start things on the left side you know Tronics Switch your stances, feel something coming. Still gets knocked up and stunned. Looking for the jump over the wall, will find it. DJ not quick enough to chase, knowing that Shadow Q is gonna meet up with his hunter. Seemed that Zyman had to back in the earlier phase of that yeah. lane, so that's Curious. where we saw DJ Pernicus. He tried to gank as early as possible, making sure that the lane, he would gank while the wave was still there, but the clear from Xenotronics was too quick to take advantage of that. So instead, a little bit of mind games, he allowed the wave to still leave the vicinity of DJ so that Zaman can sold the lane and he wouldn't be too far behind. And we, that's why we see the one level advantage for the Medusa on Eager. Rolling out, it's going to be a roar meeting up with DJ Pernicus here. Early on in this game, Flashpoint grouped up on the right side, looking to invade a second time for the bus, but won't get it. They hesitate because they want to find a kill onto the best. They're going to knock him up really late beats. The ultimate from Incon not he on misses. the mark. The gap shield mirage. He's in execute threshold. Best is not going to get dove. The hesitation from Flashpoint yet again. It seemed that the best was able to tick enough health to be able to get out of that execute threshold at the last If second. Mirage is going to make that execute, if Mirage is going to dive for the execute kill right there, he continues to dive even after he gets out of execute 
execute range. You land down as the Thanatos, you hit him with the Death Scythe, and even the Silence, that is a dead Poseidon. I, I Mirage last season on Noble was aggressive to a fault, yes. Anatoly. I, he was he definitely wasn't a top-tier juggler, but the, his problem was that he was over-aggressive. That right there, you have to play that aggressive. That's a missed first blood opportunity for Flashpoint. I remember that exact game you're talking about. It was against Envious when he was playing the Nemesis. He was just diving the yep. mid tower nonstop, finding the kills. He would even make it a statement to be able to dive your tier two tower to find the kill while still being ahead in levels. And I prefer that. And that's a good way to really get off the mind games. You're basically putting the enemy in a position where it's like, this guy's just diving us and there's nothing we could do about it. But I like to play it a complete 180 compared to the beginning of the last split is Mirage. That right there, I, I have to... Somebody somebody must have called him back I, because not only does he have the dive opportunity, Thanatos, you're going to heal up at least... You're going to get hit by one of those tower shots. You're going to heal up but just from the kill itself, let alone the death scythe damage that's coming out. But also, in Continentia, hit the ultimate through. There's a portal out for you. Let me, let me rephrase that. In Con unleashed his ultimate and hit a wall. He didn't actually hit the player. That's a dead Poseidon if Incon hits his point blank ultimate, but that's a different conversation altogether. I, I think despite the but despite the mechanical mistakes that happened there, you, you have to look at what happened with Mirage's lack of aggression. Ooh, Gino taking a lot of damage. He's gonna get slowed out by the ultimate, forced into the beats, expecting Zatman to dash in after him to find two or three more additional enhance to find the kill. But look at this, Zeno recognizes the fact that Eager has to back, so he's gonna stay in the lane, making sure he doesn't lose any gold or experience under that tower. He did lose the race for Transcendence considering the fact that he went into the Warrior tab. So Zav, he's going to hit a little bit harder off the enhance, but he's not going to have the same kind of mobility. I love the Medusa Transcendence build. Medusa, one of the, uh, one of the pure or one of the real ability-based hunters for sure. You look at characters like Neath, like Uller even. Medusa however is one of the most, if not the most, mage-like, I would say. Mid lane. Giannis using his ultimate to get through. DJ Pernik is able to dash away from danger. Aurora finding the Cataclysm, trying to peel away, but he's going to get pulled back in through Into the, the portal. portal. He goes on Stable Vortex, doing a little bit of damage. Aquarius is here, but not really else to follow up. Still holding on to the Kraken is the best. So, would you have... If you are that subtle cog making that, making that transition... Do you ox or do you tiger stun? I like the ox because you don't want to get disrupted as well. The tiger is too difficult, especially or too difficult to land when there's a wave right next to you. If you hit a minion, that tiger is going to get absorbed right off the bat. Mm. So it's better safe than sorry going through the ox. Well, so, yeah, I like that. I like the idea right there. Right side flashpoint able to take out some of the farm in the jungle. Still, still a tie game here, folks. Eager up one game to none in our two game set at the moment, but... Our second game Mirage. dead even right now. Lurking in the sky is going to be Thanatos. Lands down, misses some of the damage, but still can't hit the follow-up. Here comes DJ on the backside, looking one versus three. Best trying to find a target. He's for waiting for the setup. DJ yeah. Pernicus was trying to land the stun to confirm the Whirlpool Kraken, but instead Flashpoint doing a good job disengaging from that encounter. We even saw Mirage disengage, afraid that he was about to get Kraken. Almost finding the kill onto Aurora. It would have been a nice little first blood bounty for him, but instead, yet again, both teams electing to play it super safe. Eager yet again confirming these oracles, still getting a lot of vision around this gold. See, that time, that time I really have no problem with Mirage's lack of aggression because of the the fact that the best had the Kraken on, off of cooldown, ready to go. Now that that situation on the tower, Kraken was all, was was not available, so that's a different story. But right here, Thanatos players have to be careful of that instant burst coming out from Poseidon. This hesitation though from Mirage, I'm not a big fan of it because now he's two levels behind on the side of DJ Pernik, is not able to make the place, and not only is he not making the place, he's sacrificing crucial farm to be able to think he's, about making the place. He's the bottom of the farm list. I mean, he's below both supports as far as the gold is concerned. And like I said, I mean, you can't all point to the the missed, the single missed first blood opportunity right there on the Poseidon. There's other things going on on the map, but Thanatos in general does not really excel when he's behind. 
there was just too much farm shared around that blue and the speed buff. We saw four people from Flashpoint invading yeah. those buffs, and which is why not too much gold, whereas DJ Pernicus was doing a good job solo invading the speed from Flashpoint. This time around, Eager looking to play up on these left side mid harpies. They don't have the sentry vision control, but they have the tools necessary to just fan out and maybe bait Flashpoint, but a nice regular ward from Flashpoint spots a roar, so they're not going to be taking that bait quite yet. Xenotronic still trying to deal with Zapman. Zapman gets aggressive, finds a dash, a couple of basics as well. Acid Spit brings Zeno down to about half HP. Incon misses the ult one more time, but this is trouble for Zapman. Flashpoint coalescing on the left-hand side. Mirage walks the opposite direction. Four on two. They're just going to back off because they're afraid of a roar. And the ultimate, the global ultimate from DJ Pernicus, which doesn't exist. He's in the mid lane instead. Aurora is still holding on to his Cataclysm just for good measure. The ultimate from Incon was just not used efficiently there. They had a two-man advantage, but now Mirage, he's going to get Whirlpool cracking. This is what happens when you don't have a hesitation. You find kills. Exactly. Ten minutes in, Team Eager collect their first blood. And the important part, like Tully said, no hesitation. That play right there was not drawn in a playbook. That was not planned out beforehand. Aurora said, hey, look at this guy by himself. He rolls out and just goes, I'm going to ult. And Beth says, me too. That's, that just happens off the top. First blood goes down. Eager stretches it by grabbing the gold fury right there. And that's all because of a lack of hesitation. 2,300 gold in the lead. Eager quickly. The game was tied before that sequence. Bam. Just like that, like an elevator. Up goes Team Eager in the lead. Eager knows when to play aggressive, capitalizing off of a team's slight misplays. With the ultimate from Incon being down, trying to get a kill onto Zaman, it was very easy to aggress further into Flashpoint's jungle, recognizing that the mobility was severely hindered, not having through space and time, as well as the back on the left-hand side. Both Xenotronics and ShadowQ elected to still sit in that duel lane, and Aurora and Best, they've been playing together for ever yeah. since their days even before joining up eager they were also on cognitive gaming mm -hmm. way back in the day in season two with dj and kabam and you know this this is a squad that dj has played with uh, with a couple of these players for a long time it's very interesting how this team eager came together zapman and aurora lane together and then did it the best and zapman played together and then did it dj played with aurora and the best and then did it all these players had previously teamed up and then moved on Honestly, with the exception of Divios. And then they all come together on this team eager. I, 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 it's a very interesting backstory for EGR. They but. found something that's working out very clearly for them. You know, making Worlds for the very first time yeah. in Season 3, you know, despite not making it to the finals, not winning it all, is not going to hinder Eager in terms of making up these roster changes that we've seen so many other teams doing. Even Obey Alliance, the second place team in Worlds, making two roster changes. Well, Eager I think still one of the I think one of those roster changes for Obey was under their control, the support player. Uh, I think Variety left on his own accord. Sometimes you can't really help it. Aquarius will just barely make it out. DJ, see, that 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 right there is the calculated aggression. DJ is aggressive. He's in the enemy jungle, but he's not going too hard because he knows he's going to have to help his out his support player on the back line. DJ forces out the ultimate from Shadow Q. Mirage in the sky looking for a teammate. Not going to be able to find anything quite yet. DJ, though, has a longer hang time in the Rattatasker. He's trying to help out the portal demon that's being started by Divios. The rest of Eager's rotating. They have the Kraken available with Flashpoint using through space and time. They're going to be able to force the issue. And Zatman coming out for the mid lane. Going to wrap around from behind. There's a nice knockup coming out from Aurora. Quares dealing with the best and Aurora on the backside. Incon drops a good portal. DJ forced out the Aegis. Divio's low. Zapman from behind picks up Incon. He's by himself. He needs his teammates. Aegis to help him out at the moment. Mirage gets the silence as soon as the dash comes. There's a roar for help. And the knockup is strong. Eager has a creation from, from a teleport. And the best is able to take down Shadow Q. Three kills in total. Two in that engagement. And Team Eager, honestly, Zapman with the wraparound play turns that into a fantastic sequence for Team Eager, and they're not done. They're not done. They're finding their third kill of this engagement. Aquarius very low. Not hitting the mark is Divius with a furious roar. Finally, DJ Pernicus confirming that. What a slippery snake Zapman is. He goes in the back. He <laughs> finds Incon. He's buying enough time to bait out so many abilities 1v3 with the Aegis, which is no Zapman Aegis, by no. the way. That's a different story. <laughs> 
and then he dashes away into the safety of Aurora. They don't even need to shield them, finds the knockup. The rest of Eager just cleaned that up, and now they find the Portal Demon. They're up 4,000 gold, 14 minutes. Much quicker pace game than the last one. Oh, absolutely, and this is this is the difference. It's very interesting that teams teams have a have a certain feel that they want to go for, but it. Your game of Smite varies from game to game so much because of your opposition and your, more importantly, your composition in your own team. Game number one, like me and Tolly were saying, was, I don't want to say boring, but we sat here for 20 minutes and Eager wanted it that way because they had a Scylla in the mid lane. With a Poseidon, you're looking more for that mid-game fight, that 14-minute fight, and that's why we see Eager so rambunctious here in game number two. Tier one tower goes down. That's 500 gold in the pockets of Team Eager. Mirage could chase the sky by Divios off the right hand side. Down he comes, helps out on the, the hit from Mirage. Mirage is gone! The best picks it up, and here comes help on the support. Shadow Q gets his ult off, but the damage has been done. He's 10% or higher, and he's on his way out. Quarius on the left hand side, still taking damage from Zapman. Finds a way to the ultimate, and he'll be safe. Through space and time was used. Nice! Bladed arrow from Xenotronics, finding the best from a distance. The portals are still available to be taken, and that's what Flashpoint are doing. They're trying to catch DJ Pernicus on the left, but now in the mid lane, Divio's getting stunned out. Nice little portal. Zapman trying to buy some time, gets rooted into place, still holding on. His dash is on cooldown. It's going to be Aquarius diving the tier one tower. So far, two for nothing. Eager down a little bit, but with a sustain from Shadow Q, they're just going to potentially still dive this tier one mid tower. But because DJ Pernicus is so far forward, he's not allowing any waves here. So if they're going to grab that tier one mid tower, they need to do it without the backdoor protection. And they, ju they just can't. You see Flashpoint have to peel off and they're all looking for the rat. They're all looking for the rat. They want him. He's speed buff right attacker. He has to go through the tier two to survive. Oh, he gets stunned. Nice. Aegis though, buying some more time, dashing through. We talked about a slippery snake. This is one slippery rat. DJ Party is that's that that's is unacceptable. so that is com that yes that is completely unacceptable on Flashpoint's part. If you're gonna chase that, which I don't like the decision to anyway, you have to get the kill. At that point, Anatoly, you go for the tier one tower. I didn't see whether or not Gold Fury was up at the it time, but it, 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 it didn't. Okay, so if Gold Fury was up, I would have definitely liked to see a flashpoint. Ignore the tier one mid tower, ignore DJ and go for it. But that's so, unfortunate timing for them not to be able to go for it because this stage of the game, they can't really go for fire. They can't really go for tier one mid tower without a wave. It was a well calculated play from DJ Pernicus, making it more difficult than it needed to be to grab that tier one mid. You don't get slowed a little bit. DJ's gonna dash forward, look for a stun, but the beads will help him out. Still alive, however. That man stands still for the moment. He's got to respect that damage out of the Uler, though. Good accuracy coming out of Xenotronics. He's very comfortable on this Uler, but with the Yasi here coming out of Zem, and he's able to sustain all of this, or most of it at least, back up. Golfiri has respawned with Zem, and Xenotronics at about half health. Have to respect the potential burst coming out of Eager, though. With that Whirlpool Kraken, they can easily burst this down, so... Flashpoint needs to make sure that they're coordinated. They need to have Incon use that ultimate to get everybody in position to commit. But the difference here for between these two teams that I'm looking at, that's the biggest gap of all time, is the junglers. Three level disparity between DJ and Mirage. So that gold fury spawned when the team when Flashpoint was heading, they hit the they hit the tier one, and then they said, we can't do this, and they went into the right side jungle. And right when they stepped into the jungle, boom, it spawned. I don't think they had their eyes on it at that moment. They had their eyes on it. On a route of Tasker. Tolly, I really think they could have taken that tier one tower without the back door. I, I think they might have, you know, been in a position where had Team Eager responded, they might have lost a support. But I think that's the play. And and I want to, do you agree that I think sometimes you have to force those plays at this point in the game? Well, you know I like to force a lot of plays, but coming out of Flashpoint to go, because the fact of the matter was, there were, a couple of them were about half health or so. Granted, they did have Shadow Q with the sustain, but it would have taken them so long that Eager would have had enough time to respawn and be able to chase them down at the end. Flashpoint, no response. Yeah. Eager got a goal yeah. for free. Just just too long. It just took them too long. Incon ults. Uh, in Incon ults. Aurora's going to give his life for this, and that's totally fine. Down he goes. Here's a help. Mirage doesn't takes to the sky. Mirage saw that execute. Mirage saw that execute icon and just went for it. But a wasted ult coming out from Thanatos. Zero, two, and one. A rather unimpactful situation for our Thanatos player here, Mirage. We had such high hopes for him. This is this is. It's very interesting. 
Thanatos is one of Mirage's most played characters when it comes to the solo queue world, when it comes to ranked and beyond, but we've seen more success out of other gods in competitive for Mirage. And surprisingly, he's not going for a defensive build with either Breastplate of Valor or the Shield of Regrowth, having that cooldown, having the mobility, which is something we're used to seeing out of a lot of Thanatos is now. Flashpoint with Aurora just now responding. Five on four for a little bit while he's still rotating. Portal Demon was flirted with, but now it's the best in a tricky situation. Yeah, the best was looking for the wraparound, looking for the surprise Kraken for the steal. Instead, he gets sniffed out. Aquarius tries to get him, but he's by himself. Zatman takes out the support. Thanatos is just throwing death sights. But the best takes out the solo laner with help from the rest of the team. Incon makes his escape through the right side wall, and you can see... Uller makes his escape through the left side wall. Flashpoint were so busy trying to get the best that it was both Zap and DJ Pernicus finding Shadow Q on the side, isolated completely away, and then Aquarius overextended, couldn't even get out. His ultimate was still on cooldown from the last engagement. DJ trying to do something against Zeno. The Aussie has been procced. Aegis as well. Zeno trying to find the hit. He jumps right back nice down. Play. Finds the last in him, but the question is, can he get away from the best that jumps on cooldown? And there's the Kraken right on top of him. Walks out of the mid-circle. That's a good look. So you don't try to still dealing. Can't find the stun. Nice juke from Best. He has the Fatalis and the Gem of Isolation. Trying to use the Aussie proc to be able to get away from this one. No Fatalis on the side of Xeno. He still has the Aegis nice on the beads, around. but it doesn't matter. He's going to play it safe. Eager, Sneak a Portal Demon as well through and space and time. And meanwhile, Zatman off screen gets the kill out of the jungle. Thanatos one more time. It's going to be the third sit down for Mirage. Zatman, while his team was taking care of the Portal Demon, goes ahead and takes care of. Mirage. Xenotronics has looked to be a fantastic player here for Flashpoint. One of their standout players, um, even, even in these losses or even in the earlier loss before and in this game where he trails, he, we saw the individual kill over there on the left side and then another individual kill here in the jungle for Xeno. This is a great change of pace from Xeno compared to his last week's performance against Luminosity because last week he tried to do a little bit too much against Barracuda. Both games when he was Apollo and the Soul against Barracuda, he would over Extend towards Barracuda's tower, trying to box him 1v1, and then the rest of Luminosity collapsed. But now, Xenotronics is letting the place come to him, yeah. and he's finding them. He's not overextending. He's just playing his game. And this is, sure, this is just a commentator. I, I am not, I have not spoken to Zeno, unfortunately. I like that guy. I haven't spoken to Zeno since the season began. I think there's got to be a little personal, uh, you got to play up for your ex team, right? Now versus Team Eager, not so much in your own head, just letting it come to you. And, and honestly, you know, with the rest of the team having their struggles, Zeno certainly, this is a team that everybody's trying to improve, but everybody's also putting themselves, putting the world on notice that they're a stronger player than they have been in the past. This is Zeno saying, hey, maybe next time a higher level team will pick me up in the in the Hunter role. Because don't forget, Zeno joining LG was, I, I think his performance last season was, was lukewarm. It was average, not bad, not great. But mid is out of position for him. He's a hunter. Despite being mid, he was still playing hunters, but look at this in the mid lane. Oh Aurora God. sets up best beautifully. DJ Pernicus trying to dive the back line. He there lands on to Shadow Q. That's going to be not a kill. Bluestone Pen is still ticking. Mirage, Mirage very low. DJ still looking to flank this. All of Flashpoint have to run away. They're too low to defend the tier 2 mid tower. I love DJ's decision making there. Lands on Mirage. Doesn't look for the kill on the Thanatos because a Thanatos with 10% HP is as good as dead. Instead, turns around, looks for Shadow Q because the support player can still impact the team fight. Pushes both of them out, and that allows Team Eager to grab the Tier 2 tower. Incon through the teleport one more time, looking for the big play. Zeno gets thrown. Beads already used. There's the Aegis. Zeno's in trouble. Follow-up damage from Zatman. Good enough, and it's double digits. Team Eager still pushing on. Aquarius hits the ultimate. The Sun Wukong will live to see another day, but Eager fighting up the middle lane. They're trying to find another kill. Aquarius is doing a good job going through the Tier 1 tower with that bird form, but Flashpoint. We talked about hesitation, but that one was just too much of a pulling of a trigger too quickly because they fought three on five. Yeah. Both Mirage and Shadow Q were so low, they had to back to base. The ultimate from Incon was too early, and the positioning of it didn't really allow Mirage and Shadow Q to take full advantage of those portals. Difference between these two teams, ladies and gentlemen. Show me the clip of the entire team Flashpoint leaving a tier one tower that was arguably free to chase around a tasker with 10% HP that gets out anyway. Now, show me this, where Team Eager leave Aquarius 
and they clean the team up later on, and then will inevitably start the fire giant. DJ. That's the difference. It's discipline. That's all it is. They're just finding kills left, right, and center. This is Eager's game. They're just basically picking off one member at a time from Flashpoint. Aquarius doing whatever he could to potentially delay Eager from getting the fire giant. It's almost inevitable at this point for Flashpoint to really start getting picked off. They can't be in a good enough position to start off a team fight in their favor. A little bit of damage on Zeno. DJ one more time against Xenotronics, looking for his reprise. Xenotronics getting the better of the jungler last time around. Now still trying to fight. Divio's playing a little bit of zone. Fire Giant down to 10% HP. 5% HP. Zeno can't nail it. There's help from Incon. Fire Giant going to be leashed, and everybody going to be looking for the kills. Zeno takes damage. Mirage about half HP. Still looking for the fight. And Zatman's going to go finish the Fire Giant by his lonesome as DJ goes ahead and picks it up. The reason Team Eager leashed that Fire Giant totally is because of that ultimate coming out of Incon. That's right, through space and time was used. It even hit the Fire Giant, yeah. which is why we saw the delay of DPS coming out of Eager, as well as being afraid of who was gonna come through those portals and at what timing <laughs> they were gonna come through. You never know if it's gonna be a squishy with a lot of damage or a tank that's gonna bait out your abilities. Yeah. We've seen a lot of traps being set up in that same exact area where the Portal Demon portal comes mm. after you be able to secure that objective where teams hover around the portal, set up a trap. But if that's a tanky target, you don't necessarily want to blow all your cooldowns on that one target. I just, I, I, so I just gave Eager a round of applause for being more disciplined than Flashpoint, not chasing their kills right there. Uh, I don't think it was in as egregious an example as what we saw before, but Team Eager, that Fire Giant was definitely doable after the fact that they leashed it. Uh, we just saw too many players chase after the Mirage and Xenotronics duo pair. I think if you keep the Hunter on that the whole time, that the Fire Giant still goes the way of Team Eager, even after leashing it for the Incon. Unfortunately for Eager, Zaman kind of dropped the ball in terms of leashing the fire charge, uh, exactly, or at least work, yeah. working the mechanics as well. He got knocked up the second time around. He mm. couldn't walk away from the first line. He had to use his dash towards a corner. Then all of a sudden, he didn't move quick enough to be able to escape the second dash. So a lot of his DPS was hindered because of those mm, mechanics. There you go. So little little problems here for Team Eager. I mean, you'd say that, but looking at the charts, 14,000 gold, 15,000 experience. I don't... I think it's a little problem for Eager. I think it's a huge problem for Flashpoint. Sure. At the same time, you know. Team they didn't Eager, get the fire giant. That's what you're saying. Team Eager not quite scoring a 1600 today, folks. 26 minutes in. The SAT's out of like 2100 now, isn't They're it? They're 2400 now. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> it's been a while since I took them. So, out of, not getting to 2,400, that is. 26 on the clock, however. Team Eager with bad luck, 13 in the kill column, 4 for Flashpoint. It is a 13, almost 14,000. That'll make it 14,000 gold in the lead. 14 eager. And here's my question, Anatoly. Is that Flashpoint this game have Ooh, been through space and time? Nice ultimate from DJ and Incon whips both abilities right there in between. DJ standing still, not a muscle moving, and Incontinentia just off the mark. This Giannis game has not been his game, Tolly. Oh no, Aquarius Cataclysm Kraken dead. Aquarius Eager hey, man. able to escape death on one side, securing a kill on another. Hey man, Aquarius. It's the, it's the water side. You gotta go swimming with Poseidon, man. That's just the fact of the matter. The Sun Wukong sits down for 40 seconds. Portal Demon Giant Guy Friend Man boss goes down from the hand of Team Eager. And that'll open some opportunities for the blue and white. They'll head home. And they'll be able to heal up, rebuy, and come right back. Not going for the Fire Giant quite yet. Still electing to buy, go back to base, use that portal to get back in position. Both Aquarius is still dead for about 15 seconds. His teleport is available, but without the Kraken on the side of the best, Eager's still going to play it very safe. They're going to yeah. have DJ Pernicus split on the left-hand side, maybe baiting Flashpoint to take the bait on the right, and then we're going to see the rotation underneath from DJ. That's yeah, that's the idea. We've seen this a number of times. DJ not going to commit to the split push this time instead. Just walking around, trying to, like you said, draw the ire of the enemy more so than actually anything uh, of value here. But if given the opportunity, he will certainly look for that tower. Aurora just casually rolling around. Yeah, why not? What happens when you see a pizza walking down the street? One of the famous Aurora quotes that make no sense whatsoever. Aurora is such a, an interesting individual. Comes through with his gameplay. Right now he's playing the Geb. But, uh... 
more more familiar fans associate him with oddball picks like Fenrir, even a Bakasaurus support once upon a time is something we've seen Aurora do rather successfully as well. And that was during a time when Aurora was still trying to figure himself out both as a player and a teammate for whatever team he was in at the time. Mirage in the sky trying to land onto Zap, Big the play. ultimate not on target. Aegis is being used as well, trying to buy some time. Shadow Q now though, he's going to get rooted, nowhere to go. Oh man, rough stuff right there. Sorry to correct you, Anatoly. That's, that, the ultimate was on target. The only reason I'm correcting you was because it was one of the first ultimates that Mirage hit. So I want to give credit where credit's due. Nice portal. That's good map knowledge coming out from Incon. Some of those odd lane type uh, Giannis portals are, you got to do your homework on. Yep. There's a little spot over there by the duo lane as well. So I like to see Incon pulling off those portals at least. Deville's doing a good job zoning away from the fire giant. Five on four for Eager for another 10 second shadow Q is not here. Deville's taking a lot of damage, but Eager have the fire giant and they're on the chase. They want to find something. Aquarius going to get slowed down by the Fatalist Gem of Isolation best. And now Aurora rolling on in. He's waiting for Aquarius to land, but not going to be able to chase the Eagle. Divios instead opting for the farm on the backside. Aurora finds a little bit of a knock up. Nothing too consequential, however. Team Eager now splitting, coming together here in the mid lane, rather. We used to see Eager go with the, the, the Talon Claw, where they'd have a bunch of people mid Frenzy. and then the sides. Here comes the big push. The Phoenix melts like cheese. And the right side is all about the Phoenix one more time. DJ Purdy is looking for the help, off of the support, finds the knockup after the knockup. And there's help. Beats to help Pernigas out of the hole. And the two Phoenixes on the mid of the right-hand side, down for the count. Big Kraken comes out. Divios fishes him out of the water. There's a kill for the mid lane. There's a kill for the jungler. Two down on the side of Flashpoint. Not done yet. Eager heading right for the Titan. 50% HP on the big man. Zeno's going down as well. Aquarius is here for the moment. But just like his team, the time is fleeting. Nothing to do here for Aquarius except delay the inevitable. The that Titan from Flashpoint is going to fall. Eager secured their second win of this two game set grabbing three more points heading into sunday with six points already 12 1 and 2 for the mid lane clean. poseidon clean the best out of control and you know i said this kind of joking uh, earlier in the season but when it comes down to it, Best has been playing mid lane forever. And you've got Andy, you've got Baskin, you've got Incon, these sort of new kids on the block. And Aurora, or excuse me, ba uh, the Best, he's just looking to shove people in lockers this time around. I love it. Nothing really happening there for Flashpoint, unfortunately. Eager walk mm. away very cleanly, Best on top of his game. 2 0 going the way of Eager. Again, we've got Ryan and Taco standing by. And the best was indeed looking like a bit of a school bully, especially in that last game. What a phenomenal performance coming out on the side of Team Eager. And I'm sure that he's more than happy to be securing such a confident and easygoing like two sets. Two pretty clean games coming out on the side of Eager. Anytime you finish with a dozen kills, you're yeah. feeling good. I mean, best <laughs> was on point all game long. But for me, Taco, it was the fact that Every time we saw Best make a play, who was right there next to him? Aurora. It was always Aurora setting up for Best, and the team synergy was beautiful uh, on Eager. Yeah, definitely got to give some love into that support gameplay. The Geb shields were just absolutely on point, whether it was for cleansing or just for general, I want to give my teammates some extra health so they can go in and keep on fragging. That was pretty important, I'd say, overall. And his cataclysms were just absolutely on point for yeah. Zatman and Best. Like, they were able to secure so many kills and so much setup coming out on the side of Eager. Just, I, I mean, I would love it when my support makes me look good as an ADC and oh, yeah. as a mid. So. A absolutely. I mean, he it, that's the dream right there. That's what you have your supports <laughs> for, right? Yeah. No, more, most, most definitely, like, that's just absolutely well done all around by them. And you can see here right away, Zatman going ahead, taking the engagement. A little bit risky, but there's the shield coming out strong from Aurora. Zatman getting right back into it, followed up by Best, and just easy pickings all around. Yeah. And then again, right here, you can see him going away with the Medusa and the Geb knockup. Yeah, Medusa definitely starting to come back into the meta here in Season 4, and Zap showing you why with the extra damage on the Petrify, even when the enemy is looking away. Really, really strong play from Zatman and Best.
But again, in all these clips, who's right there next to him? A roar. It's a roar. <laughs> all around, really strong gameplay coming out on the side. And you can that's where you can really tell that there's just so much synergy and communication coming mm -hmm. in for Team Eager. And I mean, that's definitely something that comes along with the fact that they've just been together for so long. Like, this yeah. roster is more than confident in each other. Oh, absolutely. You could just tell every time that anyone is initiating, specifically a roar, that communication is always there. And like you mentioned, one of the only NA teams or teams across both North America and Europe to stick together in season four. Uh, they're the only team that's four and zero oh right now, Taco. So I don't think that's uh, I don't think that's a coincidence. That is definitely not a coincidence in the slightest. And if they continue with gameplay like this, I mean, Eager are definitely looking to come out strong again. This is a really, really solid performance for them for their very first two sets to go ahead and secure those six points. Yeah. And I just want to say, like, congratulations to them all around. That was just absolutely awesome gameplay. And like we've been talking about, Aurora being the man of the hour, we actually have him here right now to talk to us. Aurora, how's it going, buddy? Okay, so it seems like he's a little bit camera shy or uh, voice yeah. comm shy. I don't know. Sometimes that well, can Aurora, happen. Aurora's not shy. But I mean, that's that's Aurora. He's he's always loud and boisterous all the time. Must be just a little bit of technical issues, but uh, you know, nothing, nothing, no issues for Eager during that set whatsoever. They, like you mentioned, just completely clean, and that's especially important whenever Luminosity Hello? ends up dropping a game to Noble. They get upset, and it really allows you allow the team like Eager to jump to the top of the leaderboards in North America. Yeah, no, definitely something that they are able to go ahead and secure because, you know, Luminosity is probably a really big contender for Team Eager. So mm -hmm. for them to go ahead and have such clean gameplay for today. And I mean, like we said, we do have Aurora and it seems like he is actually here with us now. So let's go ahead. Aurora, how is it going, my man? And oh, feels uh, bad. <laughs> we just got production just baited us so hard. Taco. <laughs> It just can I get a debated in the chat for, oh, for me man. and Taco right here? That's this, uh, you know, it just happens. That sometimes. feels kind of bad sometimes. That's all right. You yeah, know, we just we just roll with it. Yeah, well, I'm sure. You know what? Why don't we just go ahead and I, I'll be a roar in this situation. Oh my God, that was so easy. I had a great time. Yeah, wow. Ha ha ha! This year is my year. <laughs> yeah, you need some more. Hand, I need some more a spirit dance fingers. moves, something like that. <laughs> I don't think anyone really wants to see you cosplaying Aurora. I don't think Taco, I could, to, to be honest. honest. He's no, quite no the character. No one can cosplay Aurora. He's the best. Yeah, no, definitely. I mean, and those plays are pretty much the best as well. He might need to take that name away from the best indeed after see seeing the most cataclysms yep. that were coming away. Yeah, they were very clean. So. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I mean, that was, it was a solid day all around for the SPL, right? We get we got a lot of good games, two in EU, two in North America. We, like we mentioned, LG actually ends up dropping a game to Noble, which allows Eager to jump to the top of NA right now. But a uh, really good day, a Thursday smite. Oh, no, I, I would say, and also not to mention, like, the fact that that was our Thursday night's might match of the week, the match that we really wanted to look at, you know, was between Zatman and Xenotronics. And honestly, if you look at it from that perspective of the ADC and duo lane side, right. I really don't think that that was, like, a disappointment in the slightest. I think the Xenotronics, for going up against Zatman after having just faced off against Barracuda, sure. he's definitely holding his own in this yeah. ADC position. And for those of you back home who aren't quite yet aware, Xenotronics was actually an ADC main at the get-go and then he transitioned right. into the role of mid laner to fill that forward luminosity because i mean uh, who would turn down an yeah. spl position for that with such a strong roster but he is definitely not having any kind of rust issues in my opinion for no. coming back into the role so like late into the season especially i mean you're going up against two of the most tenured hunters in the yeah. entire world You've Barracuda week one, Zatman week two, and like you mentioned, you're just really, really fresh back to that Hunter role, but Xeno definitely is starting to work it, work it towards a, a good spot for Flashpoint. The team as a whole still needs to come together a little bit. I mean, obviously, not quite at the level of a team like Eager. Eager was able to move them around the map, and the, Flashpoint just needs to find an identity for me and play a little bit more aggressive. They felt very, very reactive during that set, and I talk about it all the time. It's just, it's difficult to play whenever you're only reacting to what the enemy is doing to you. You have to really go out there and be proactive, be aggressive, and make your own plays happen. Flashpoint still needs that confidence to get there, but definitely some flashes that we could see them do in the future. Oh yeah, no, there's definitely a spark of light that seems to be coming out from them. And I mean, I think there's still definitely a team to look forward to in the future. Sure. And speaking of the future, guys, we actually aren't able to go ahead with the interview from Aurora, but that's not all the smite action we have for you guys coming up. This Saturday, we will be continuing with the SPL where we'll be seeing EU face off once again. So make sure that you guys tune in to Hi-Res TV on Saturday. Same time for...